On day one, I spawned into the gravelly mountains as a garbage man. It's time to take out the trash. Hmm, that seems a little too generic. I'll keep working on potential catchphrases. That's when I felt a mysterious presence behind me and turned to see an armored mountaineer pointing a crossbow in my face. Got a catchphrase for you, kid. How about, don't worry, Mr. Mountaineer. I'll come quietly. How about you try that one on for size, hmm? It's memorable, but I don't think it has the kind of multi-use applicability in a good catchphrase. Then pay Perish. That's more like it. I took off and ran for the hills. It was a shame I didn't have my garbage truck or I could have made it out of there slightly faster. Oh man, I only have five hearts. I'm a big stinky baby. It must be because of all the garbage I hang around. I could have run forever until I got a crossbow bolt straight in the butt and fell over on the ground. What kind of monster shoots a baby? That's when the armored mountaineer caught up with me. This kind of monster. Now come with me or I'm gonna shoot the next one somewhere way Way worse. On day two, the mountaineers led me to a stronghold that was just as fortified as they were. Are you scared of our armored base, garbage boy? I'm a garbage man. Or at least I'm going to be. And no, I'm just wondering why you've dragged me all the way out here. That's less fun, but you'll be shaking in your filthy boots soon enough. I definitely wasn't scared, but I also didn't want to argue with a guy holding a crossbow. We passed through the entrance, and I was blown away by how big their base really was on the inside. This is incredible. Who is funding this mountaineering operation anyway? I only get a check from the government. Inheritance. Lots of inheritance. Pretty soon, the mountaineer brought me to a nice room with three walls and a set of prison bars at the entrance. Hey, wait. Is this a jail cell? No. Now wait here. I'll be right back. They left, and I was starting to think that this was a prison cell. Oh, yeah. It's totally a prison cell. I turned around and saw a giant cockroach, which was even larger than myself. Those guys totally want to keep you confined. They fear the power of honest, hardworking garbage men like yourself. Who are you? I'm Octa the Roach. I'm a friend, a revolutionary, and a menace to society. But enough about me. You gotta bust yourself out of here. That sounds sensible. Maybe if I use this trash lying in the cell, I can disguise myself as one of the mountaineers. I soon put my brilliant plan into action, and with a bit of adjustment, I looked exactly like an armored mountaineer. One of the real ones came by, saw me in the jail cell, and let me out. What were you doing in there, guy? I don't know, but I'm leaving forever. I made a hasty retreat from the mountaineer base and obtained my freedom. On day three, having gone my separate ways from Ogtha the radical cockroach, I made my way into a nearby bayou. Wow, this place is hot and human and steamy. It reminds me of trash. I love it. I spent hours frolicking through the swamps, eating dirt, and punching trees. Eventually, these bayou rituals paid off because I found a hawk of salmon laying on the ground. That's good eating, boys. Once I'd finished chowing down on that delicious swamp fish, I was interrupted by a strange dude with a big forehead and cool black robes. Hark! Okay, okay. Why'd you say that so loudly? I feel like you blew out my ears. My apologies, dear compatriot. I have trouble regulating the volume of my voice. I'm afraid it's just going to be like this. Is, uh, is there anything I can do to help you, buddy? Or are you just riffing? I actually came out here because my home is incredibly filthy. Woe is me. I haven't been keeping up on my hygiene since my wife left me. If only I could pay someone to clean up for me while I get my life back together. Hey, I'm a garbage man. I know a thing or two about filth. Lead the way, and I'll clean your house in exchange for an hourly emerald rate. This is fair to me. Follow my direction, Zozo. The bachelor pad awaits. My name is Mike, by the way. From day four to day five, I was inside the lair of Mike the Evoker. And what a nasty lair it was. This guy was so bad at cleaning that if I didn't know any better, I'd think he was trying to turn his place into an evil industrial base. <laughs> like that could ever happen. Don't thou forget mine storage? Tis the most foul stench of my once humble, now horrible abode. I'm on it. Boy, I hope these emeralds are going to be worth it. They will be for you. But alas, I am not made of emeralds. Oh, if I only had someone in my life to clean my house in perpetuity for no payment. Right. 
You work on that. I'll work on the storage room. Mike the Evoker wasn't kidding. I had to punch a lot of trash throughout the base and even had to fight some skeletons in there. Where did all of these come from? It took me a while, but I was able to bring the whole place to a semi-acceptable level of scuzz and grime. I decided to take a break and check on the situation with my payment. Hey, Mike, how many emeralds have I earned so far? Oh, we need not ruminate on emeralds at this juncture. Take this poison tooth sword. Tis a mighty and very conveniently distracting blade. He handed me a poison tooth sword. Verily, neato, a sword made from garbage. Hey, wait, was this just lying on the ground? Tis of little importance what floor it was lying upon. Have these stone tools as well. The emeralds will come another day. Trust in me, Zozo. I do not deceive. Cool. Well, I'm definitely done for the day. Catch you on the flip side, Big Mike. As I trudged over to a nearby polluted lake, I was surprised by how much better it smelled than Mike's lair. Here I shall live. Wait, I've been hanging out with Mike for too long. I built myself a base out of some moldy wood I gathered with my stone axe. While I was cutting down trees, a couple of those armored mountaineers came around looking for me. Hey, is that the garbage baby over there? Get back here. I did the exact opposite and ran away. So fast that I even teleported out of view of the armored mountaineers. Whoa, I can warp now. Did my mastery over garbage allow me to discard my previous weaker self like trash and reassemble a warp ability? I may never know. From day six to day eight, I was doing my best to clean up the horrible toxic pollution of the polluted lake. Why is there so much garbage around this world? I don't get it. It's like nobody picks up their own garbage around here. While I was doing what I could to clean, a surprise guest arrived at my base. It was Ogtha the cockroach. She'd somehow escaped from the armored mountaineer prison in the gravelly mountains. Sozo, -so, my man. Long time, no see. Agtha, how did you escape that jail? Jail is a concept, Zozo, and all concepts are mutable. I just changed my location relative to the location of the jail. Hey, I can do that too. I'm able to warp a short distance now. I warped a short distance just to show her. Pretty impressive, Zozo, but I don't need you to warp a distance. I need you to warp your mindset. This world, it's an illusion wrapped inside a mystery and deep fried in a lie. Deceptions are then deceptions, Centric trickery, you understand? Not really, but it definitely sounds interesting. Keep your ear to the ground, Zozo, but not too close, because it's filthy, and you'll get an infection or something. Wait, an infection? That reminds me, Big Mike the Evoker still owes me all those emeralds for the cleaning work I did. I should go talk to him about that. I went straight to the Evoker's base, which was somehow even filthier than last time. It was like this man just ambiently produced trash, the way normal people breathe out CO2. Zozo, my boy, you have returned? Unless mine eyes doth deceiveth me. Hi, Mike. You got those emeralds? You know, the ones you promised me for cleaning your house, which is somehow filthy again? Oh, of course. Those emeralds. The emeralds meant specifically to pay you, Zozo, for the cleaning. Zozo's emeralds. I'd never forget such a thing. Then where are they? Not here. I lent some money to a so-called friend, the Aqua Dolphin of the Magma Waste. Go shake down that deadbeat, and you can keep whatever emeralds he hasn't already spent on his blowhole wax. Uh, this sounds a little like you're taking advantage of me. What? Zozo? I am deeply hurt by this. How could you even suggest such a thing? I thought you knew me better than that. Apologize right now. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize it was such a touchy subject. It is, but I accept your apology. Enjoy the waste, Zozo. From day 9 to day 10, I traveled deep into the magma waste, a hostile biome bubbling with volatile lava and strange smells. It was almost as big as Big Mike's house. A dirty sea rat. The aqua dolphin had to be around here somewhere, I thought. Then again, why is an aqua dolphin living in a land of magma and fire? That's because I'm not an aqua dolphin anymore, fool. I moved up in the world. I'm a lava dolphin, baby. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a dolphin swimming through the lava towards me. Are you the aqua dolphin? No, I'm the lava dolphin. Didn't you hear what I just said, fool? Do you have Big Mike's emeralds or not? Big Mike, that fool owes me money. I'm clearly too rich to be in debt. Rich in experiences, that is. You don't know my life. Time to get destroyed, fool. The aqua dolphin swam across the land towards me and bit down on several of my hearts. His attack knocked me back and caused me to teeter on the edge of falling into the lava. As he shot forward to headbutt me, I dodged, causing him to fly past me into the lava. He swam for sure. I drew my poison tooth and struck the aqua dolphin as he came back for round two. Months, maybe years of 
living in the lava had made this dolphin extremely strong. When at last I brought him down, I felt drained and weary. That's when Octha appeared, just in time to help me heal my wounds. The moment I laid eyes upon her, my heart's refilled instantly. Whoa, how did you do that? Oh, that? Cockroaches have so much will to live that we can share it with others. I simply wanted you to be alive. Thanks, Octha. I want to be alive too. Alive enough to have a word with Big Mike over the emerald he owes me. You are more than alive, Zozo. She looked at me in a special way, and I suddenly leveled up. I now have 12 hearts and have grown into a bigger, mightier duck. A man in debt to another man is no man at all, Zozo. Are you going to be a man, or are you going to be a roach? Thanks, but Agtha, you're a roach. Yeah? So? And I'm a garbage man. From day 11 to day 12, I return to the evoker's filthy, disgusting hovel of a base, still seeking back bay. Big Mike seems surprised to see me return in one piece. Zozo, what, uh, well, not a surprise. I always knew you'd come back safe from the magma waste, even if nobody else has. Do you have those emeralds someone owed you? You! You owed me those emeralds, Mike! Calm down, Zozo. You're being hysterical. Explain to me exactly how I can make this right. I think you know, Mike. It doesn't make sense. Surely the emeralds should have been there, hoarded by the... The brown bear? Wait, uh, uh, hoarded by who? The brown bear around here in the dark forest. He's who I told you had the emeralds. Don't you remember? No, you told me the aqua dolphin in the magma waste had them. Aqua dolphin? That's ridiculous. I've never even heard of that. I'm positive I said brown bear right here in the dark forest. I'm positive he'll have the emeralds you seek. <sighs> On one hand, I have literally no reason to trust you. On the other, I feel like I'm in this now and I need to see it through. That's the attitude, Zozo. Go get him. Feeling vaguely angry and frazzled, I decided I needed a little retail therapy, by which I mean I went underground to dig up some iron ore. Lucky for me, I found some already completed iron ore pieces and an iron pickaxe ready for the taking. But clearly, I also looked ready for the taking because an armored mountaineer stuck up on me. There you are. You never should have come here, garbage boy. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm not a garbage boy. I'm a garbage man. I ran at him with my deadly sword, scaring him so much that he ran away, leaving me in peace. Wow, people really respond to confidence. From day 13 to day 15, I went off on another potentially unfruitful quest for the emeralds that seemed farther and farther away with each passing day. Yeah, right, brown bear. Come out and be peaceful. I don't want to have to put a sword to another fool in pursuit of those gosh darn emeralds. Did someone say Elmer's glue? It was a brown bear. Yep, just a brown bear. No, I said emeralds. I'm looking for Ursos Arctos, who supposedly owes an associate of mine some serious green. You got me. I'm brown bear. Brown bear means brown bear. Who's this associate of yours? Big Mike, the smelly evoker. Oh, not him. That guy, he's, well, he's just the worst of the worst. He never picks up after himself, to the point that you could smell his house throughout the dark forest. His wife left him because of that stench and because he kept lying to her and made her clean up after him for no money. On top of that, he kept borrowing money from everyone and spent it immediately. Whatever he bought was lost among the trash and he never paid anyone back. Ursus Marktos, my words. If you get involved with him, you're only asking to get all your time and money taken from you before you are thrown away with the rest of his garbage. Wow, that seems completely accurate. Like, that is 100% who he is. I don't know why I didn't see it. Literally all the evidence was staring me right in the face. Yeah, so basically not only does he not have emeralds to pay you with, you're the last in line to receive anything from the Mountain of Detios. For all you know, he's making a deal with some other person he's gone to come and take you out right now. That stinks, and I should know. I'm a garbage man. I'm going to talk to Big Mike and demand he tells me the truth about all of this. I warped off towards Mike's base angrily. From day 16 to day 19, I arrived at Evoker Mike's base. Surprise, surprise, it was in a state of total disarray, like it always was. I went in to investigate and found a note laying in a trash pile. It read, Dear Zozo, did you find the money that some guy owed to you? Here is not the right place to look if you didn't. That worthless bear is incredibly wealthy. Get the money from him. The nerve of this guy, and all because he wouldn't pay me to clean his house, which he agreed to pay me for. Before I could just give up on this venture, Octha the cockroach approached out of the filth. Octha, how'd you know I was here? I'm always nearer than you think, Zozo. As is Big Mike.
Mike the Evoker. You need to return to the brown bear. He's in terrible danger, and if Mike isn't here, he's probably there. That's a good idea, Agtha. One I should have had myself. I'm gonna return right now and save that bear. But I didn't save that bear. When I next arrived at what was once his home, I saw that he'd already been destroyed, and Big Mike the Evoker was waiting there. You've fallen into my trap, Zozo! How is this a trap? I thought you were going to do a thing, and you did, and I'm here, so it's a trap. Why won't you just pay me, Mike? I'm not even asking for that much. Because I'm cheap. Now suffer like he did! Big Mike fired a laser attack at me, immediately knocking me unconscious! From day 20 to day 22, I woke up to the familiar yet comforting smell of the polluted lake. There wasn't any more pungent odor in the wind, so I knew that Mike was long gone. But how did I make it back to my base? The dark forest was probably destroyed in our epic battle! I rose to my feet and tried to get my bearings. It seemed like somebody had taken me back to my room at Garbage HQ. Then, Ogda the cockroach emerged dramatically from the floor. I was so happy to see her, despite how weird of a way it was to greet someone. Oh good, you're up. I knew that Big Mike couldn't keep you down. He tried to take me out, but taking out the trash is my job. I like your energy right now. You're gonna need more of that clever bravado if you want to get even with that swindling evoker. How does a guy like him become so powerful in this overworld, but still not able to pick up after himself or pay people a fair wage for their labor? Don't question that, Zozo. All I need to hear from you is that you'll defeat him now. Then I'll totally respect you. Wait, Octha, don't... Don't you already respect me? Ah, uh, yeah, sure, totally. And it's not conditional on your performance as a hero whatsoever. Whew, great to hear. Thanks, Agtha. You're the sweetest roach I've ever met. Agtha would be staying at my place from now on, so I worked on getting us a bigger base. I built us an even better garbage HQ. When the outside was done, I built her a room, and I vowed to myself to continue to earn her respect by standing up for myself against Big Mike. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled into the gravelly mountains yet again, hoping this time I'd find some cool loot without needing to fight any other armored mountaineers. Mountaineer, mountain far, mountain where? Wherever you are. But I wasn't able to practice my Celine Dion covers for long because I saw an innocent Chocobo getting chased around by a huge evil cave ogre. No need to worry. I'll save you! I stormed in, separating the cave ogre from the chocobo and beginning the battle. I didn't just fight him. I used one of my special powers, making disguises out of trash, to turn into a cave ogre and talk to him. It is your father, and I'm very disappointed in you, son. Why are you out here chasing innocent bird creatures? You should go to college and become a doctor, like your brother. We're not ashamed when friends and relatives ask what he's been up to. <laughs> cave ogre ran off crying. I feel bad for destroying that guy's self-esteem, but I guess it was better than literally destroying him. Soon after, the chocobo approached me. You saved my life, man. Thank you. Nobody's ever done that before. No problem. The name's Zozo, and I'm a garbage man. The best type of hero there is. Also, were you singing a parody song about the armored mountaineers earlier? What? No. What gave you that idea? Please, don't be ashamed, Zozo. My name is Jacobo Burnham, and I specialize in comedic satirical songs. I think you've got talent. It's something you should seriously consider pursuing. That was such an amazing boost to my self-esteem. It was also a significant XP boost. I leveled up to level 20 and gained the ability to throw flaming garbage at people. Heck yeah! This seems really dangerous. From day 27 to day 31, I came upon a pack of snow leopards amidst the crunchy slopes of the gravelly mountains. With the weather being so warm up there, they were unable to make snow. I couldn't bear to see these poor animals in such a state, so I brought them back to my base and created a cold area for them. In no time, the snow leopards were making plenty of snowballs and delicious snow cones. Two snow cones, please. I thought bringing Agtha a snow cone would be a nice housewarming gift for my new roach roommate, even though warm is the last thing ice cream is. She was in the meditation room, which, hey, since when do we have a meditation room? Oh, well, for you, Agtha. I'm actually lactose intolerant, and even if I wasn't, I think I'm one of those people who simply doesn't enjoy ice cream. Oh, you're, uh, you're a hard one to figure out, aren't you, Agtha? Come, meditate with me, Zozo. We must focus on your journey. I put away the snow cones and began to meditate. I was becoming one with the universe, and soon I would be two with the universe. Elsewhere, Big Mike was doing his own thing. Indeed, though tis the tale of the Zoe of Zoe, Big Mike, who is I, have stolen the thunder. Isn't that correct, my little cactite friend? He apparently had a new henchman with him too. Some kind of small cactus dude who was 
Oddly adorable. I ain't little, see? But I am green. And you know what else is green? Those emeralds I'm gonna get my prickly hands on once I do that thing you hired me for. Yes, emeralds. I do have plenty of those, which I absolutely give to you. In truth, forsooth. From day 32 to day 35, I returned to the gravelly mountains once again. I'd been practicing some cool new parody songs that I was eager to show Chocobo Burnham. Instead, I was quickly apprehended by a gang of armored mountaineers. Hey, it's that wanted fugitive. We should take him back to the base to meet our boss, like we were trying to do a month ago. I was quickly whisked back to the base where I'd escaped from during the very first week where I'd first met Agatha. And there was an incredibly weird dude who looked like he was made of trash waiting for me. I, I actually am made of trash. I'm the Mandragora boss. You see? And I talk in rhyme. But that wasn't a rhyme. Darn, <laughs> you got me there. I just wanted you to think I was cool. Uh, but I am the Mandragora boss, though. And, and because I'm made of trash, I have a natural and enduring respect for garbage men. It's why I was so eager to meet you. Oh, <laughs> I feel kind of bad for beating up all those mountaineers now. Please, don't beat yourself up for all those people you beat up, Sozo. I'm willing to let it slide. I I'm cool like that. But what I can't let slide is how big Mike the Evoker is taking advantage of us all. He has debts that must be repaid. Wait, he owes payment to all of you guys too? Yes, and together we can get it all back. <laughs> I like the sound of that. From day 36 to day 39, I felt as if I'd been lazing around for too long. It was time for action. I had to upgrade my armor. I delved deep into the mine and gathered iron ore for the rest of my suit of iron armor. In the process, I got my hands on a mass of diamonds, the first I'd been able to find. Looking at these diamonds reminds me of Agtha for some reason, maybe because both are pretty cool. Speaking of, Agtha was waiting for me outside the mine when I came up for fresh air. Hello, Agtha. May I compare you to a diamond? What? No. Anyway, I bought you this hat. Thought it would make you look distinguished. Agtha presented me with a novelty hat, which in all likelihood probably cost more than the day's worth of pay that Big Mike owed me. Regardless, I tried it off. This hat is super radical, Agtha. I know. It looks good on you. As Agtha and I admired the way the hat looked, it felt like we were connecting on a deeper level. Then, an annoying noise from the outside shattered the peaceful bliss of the moment. Pika B. I reluctantly turned to see Pikachu. You know, everybody say it. They say Pikachu. They tell me you are Pokemon number 25, but you're number one in my book. Everyone says that. I don't need to say it. Uh, can I help you? I'm the best Pokemon. Everyone knows. I'm telling you though, you gotta go to the Shattered Desert Isle. All right, that's where he is. You didn't hear me say it, but it's the truth. Where who is, Mr. Pikachu, sir? From what I've heard, you did everything right, and Mike denied you. But Pikachu knows somebody who can help. You better go see him. What a character you turned out to be. Even so, I needed all the help I could get with this mic situation. I'd get ready to set out the following day. From day 40 to day 43, I met up with the Mandragora boss in the Shattered Desert Isles. A really weird place to meet, by all accounts. Uh, hi, Zozo. So happy you'd come over. A uh, pretty cool place, right? And wasn't it all also pretty cool how I sent Pikachu over to, uh, to get you? Uh, we're pretty tight in real life. He he's a very down-to-earth guy. Uh, first name basis and everything. Yeah. Very cool. Why did you want to see me again? Oh, no, I just wanted to hang out with you. Uh, want to watch some Stranger Things on Netflix together? Before I could even think about what I was going to say to that, a wall exploded and a weird little cactus guy entered. Yeah, it's me, Cactite. Say, I'm gonna teach you a thing or two. Say, and then my boss, Big Mike the Evoker, is gonna pay me the big bucks. Are you sure about that? Before I could tell him about Big Mike the Evoker's rampant skin flinnery, he starts to attack. All I could do was flee, having no idea how a weird little cactus dude had ever gotten so devastatingly powerful. From day 44 to day 49, the Mandragora boss and I were back at Garbage HQ, where he seemed really anxious. That was a close call back there, huh? Oh, it's not that. I just can't believe I'm actually here at Garbage HQ with you. I've dreamed of this day since I was a, a small pile of trash. And even as a big heap, I, I still dream of it. Your base is a lot cooler than mine. I mean, you've got armored mountaineers and everything. But please, make yourself at home. Just make sure not to get on Agatha's bad side. She's a little possessive. I didn't know you had a roommate, Zozo. I thought you were out here all by your lonesome. Sometimes it feels that way. When you're on a quest that only you can accomplish, loneliness is part of the job description. You garbage men truly carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, especially with Big Mike withholding your payments. 
Uh, you don't have to deal with them by yourself. If you can acquire the legendary cockroach Utheka. Cockroach Oxa? Uh, no, Utheka. It's an egg, but instead of hatching a, a true cockroach, it, it, it bestows the true powers of survival onto the one who was closest when it hatched. I didn't know they made cockroach eggs like that. We'll have to ask Agtha about that. She's around here uh, somewhere. We both sat there and waited for an awkwardly long amount of time, but Agtha didn't show up. Or, and I'm just looking out for you, you could just go find the Book of Secrets instead? I heard it's in the magma waste. That sounds like a terrible place for a book to be. I'm gonna head over there and see what I can find. You should stay here while it's safe. Last time I had to fend off a very aggressive dolphin. From day 50 to day 53, I went to the magma waste, hoping it wouldn't be a magma waste of my time. If only Chocobo Burnham was here, he would have loved that. I walked by a pool of magma where a clownfish was screaming as he burned. Oh no, oh no, I'm burning, I'm burning and I can't get out. Oh no, do you know anything about Big Mike the Evoker? and how I can defeat him with the cockroach Utheka? Oh, that's super easy, actually, when you know how to do it. Two easy steps, in fact. Step one... But before he could finish his sentence, he was burned to ash. Man, I guess this day was a wash. I'm gonna go home. From day 54 to day 57, I was taking the scenic room back to Garbage HQ through the stinky yet timelessly charming bayou. It's beautiful out here. I took a moment to stare out through the mist, drinking in the familiar stench and the natural mystique of the bayou. My moment of tranquility was interrupted by the arrival of Caxite. I almost didn't see him because he was so small, but as the prickly menace got closer, he seemed to double, no triple in size. Wait, that's just my perspective. You're making fun of my size again. I'll show you who's small after I crush you into tiny scraps, garbage man. I thought you were more of an enforcer, Cactite. All that sounds above and beyond what Big Mike is paying you for, or in all likelihood, not paying you for. Say that for someone who cares. I'm gonna bruise you like a banana. That's not even on theme. I threw some flaming garbage at the Cactite, but he was such a little target that he dodged effortlessly. Before I knew it, he was right up on me, and he punched me with his spiky cactus fists. Ow, ow, no more, please. I'm just getting started, you junkyard jerk. Turned out, Cacti really did have more fight in him. He wailed on me for a long time while I tried in vain to fight back. Eventually, my hearts were really low, and I had to run away. Yeah, that ought to show you. I don't even know what my job is anymore, but beating you up felt great. Meanwhile, at the disgusting lair of Big Mike the Evoker, the slovenly sorcerer was kicking back and relaxing as everything seemed to be going his way. Tis a fine day to not pay anyone for anything. Wee hee hee, I'm so cheap. From day 58 to day 62, I returned to the base, feeling disappointed that I didn't get any more information about the cockroach Utheka or how it would defeat Big Mike the Evoker. I'm so bummed. The only thing that could cheer me up is seeing that a cockroach has been in my home. As if on cue, Agtha emerged from the darkness. Agtha, you emerged from the darkness, exactly when I needed you to. You need to learn to be more independent, Zozo. That's why I built some new rooms for you. Observe and marvel at their splendor. Agtha had built two new extensions to our awesome base. One was a well-appointed kitchen that looked perfect for cooking. This is perfect. If there's one thing you definitely want in your kitchen, it's a cockroach. But that wasn't all she'd made. There was a furnace too, perfect for all of our smelting needs. Wow, Agtha, you've put in so much effort. It's made my arms feel tired. Don't mention it. Please, it's unbecoming. I may suddenly feel exhausted for some reason, but you've inspired me, Agtha. I'm gonna go mine some diamonds. The diamond industry is unethical and built on blood, but you do you, I guess. Whatever shiny little stones make you happy. You're a great friend, Octa, but sometimes you can be a bit of a buzzkill. I went down into the mines and used my awesome iron tools to dig up some diamonds, which I was able to turn into a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and some diamond armor. This armor is probably worth more than what Big Mike the Evoker even owes me. From day 63 to day 66, I found a mysterious pile of trash inside of my base, but it was actually the Mandragora boss. Oh, hey, MB, when did you get here? I never left, Zozo. I've been here the whole time. Uh, hoping you'd strike up a conversation with me. I mean, I've been doing a lot of my own stuff, man. I can hang out after I've solved this business with Big Mike. Um, I can help with that, but first, you need to follow me to, to a second location, outside the base. I promise it'll be worth it. Sure, why not? I trust you, boss. 
you call me boss? <laughs> oh, uh, <coughs> yeah, yes, uh, let's go hang out, or uh, uh, go on an important mission. I was convinced. The Mandragora boss and I made our way to the heart of the taiga, where a mysterious building awaited. Are we going in there? Uh, I, I wish, but actually it is super locked. Great walk, though. I isn't it just nice to, to spend time with each other? Yeah, this was fun and all, but I think I'm going to go back to my base. Later. From day 67 to day 70, Mandragora boss ran up to my base again in a blind panic. Zozo, I need your help with something urgently. Oh no, what's happening? There's a bison bison out in the end highlands, messing everything up. Did you say bison twice? He's a wild bison, a wild bison. He's ripping and he's tearing, he's ripping and he's tearing. That sounded so serious, he said it twice. So I ran out into the end highlands where I saw that there was indeed a bison bison making trouble trouble. Bison, why are you doing this? I don't know. I heard a song that said there were no rules, and now I can't stop myself. But what if there are rules? If there are rules, you're going to be in huge trouble for all of this. Oh, oh no. You're right. I should stop this. I'm going to go back to college and get a degree in textiles. Thank you, kind stranger. You've shown me the way. No problem, man. Power to the people. And with that, he ran into the distance. From day 71 to day 74, my base was being destroyed bit by bit by Cactite, who was just punching through the building. Dang, he's even tougher than I thought he was. I'm tearing up your house, you trash hauling dummy. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Frankly, I'm just shocked you haven't realized that Big Mike is grifting off of you yet. Says you. I'm getting those emeralds, and you're getting another taste of prickly pain. Yeah, all right, that's it. I drew my diamond sword and charged Cactite with all my might, but he punched me in the face and laid me out flat. That was even easier than last time. I hope you don't mind if I help myself to this novelty hat. No, I groaned in pain as I was losing consciousness. That was a gift from Ogtha. I don't know who that is, but tell her thanks for the hat, loser. I saw Cactite run off with my hat, then everything went black. I awoke several hours later in a daze. I was in my bed and Ogtha was nearby. Ogtha, I'm sorry. I lost the hat. You should be. That was a good hat. How are you going to make it up to me? I didn't answer. I looked away. I couldn't believe that Cacti had made me look like a loser. I would have my revenge. At the same time, Big Mike was still being himself. I live a life of total irresponsibility. Now the mobs I owe money to are fighting each other. Let them fight, I say, forsooth. From day 75 to day 78, a man Dragora boss once again came to my base. I can wait to see what weird half-baked excuse he had to try and hang out with me this time. Zozo, I have exciting news. Oh yeah? Uh, no, sorry, I, I lied about that. <sighs> then why are you here, Mandragora boss? I, I have more information ab ab about Cacti, Big Mike's current freelancer. I, I read in a science book that, that Cacti are mostly water, so if you keep hitting him with fire attacks like, like your flaming garbage, you'll be able to work him down and destroy him. Excellent advice, Mandragora boss. I think I finally feel ready to take him on. Uh, before you go, take this rock shell chest plate, then you'll really rock and roll. There was a long, uncomfortable pause. Do you think it was a cool line, Zozo? From day 79 to day 84, I followed the pungent smell of Big Mike's garbage until I found myself next to his industrial base. All right, Cactite, you'll have to come back here at some point, and when you are, I'll be ready. I crouched in the bushes, staking out the joint for an amount of time best described as a lot. Then I saw my novelty hat on the head of an armor stand with Cactite standing in front of it. He was here, and I was going to take him down to prove to Agtha that I wasn't a loser. I decided to sneak inside the base and slowly creep up behind Cactite for that swift sneak attack. Oi! Who did that? Surprise Zozo attack! I started swinging my weapon at Cactite, but he was still tough as ever. I dodged a swing from his cactus claws, not wanting to get knocked out again. Give it up, loser. You're never getting this sweet hat back. No! I won't let you make light of Ogtha's efforts to do the occasional nice thing for me. Brace yourself, Cactite. I'm about to throw everything that is weak and ascend to the ultimate garbage man mode. And that was it exactly what I did. I became the essence of garbage disposal itself. I had 50 hearts and more than enough power to stop Cactite for good. Garbage bash! As I called out my attack name, I swung my sword down and utterly destroyed that diabolical cactus. I was able to reclaim my novelty hat, take a special key from the cacti's voided inventory, and claim a new power for my final upgrade. Climbing walls. Who knows when that will come in handy? Hopefully soon. Time
time to head to the taiga. From day 85 to day 89, I took the special key to the taiga, ready to finally obtain the cockroach Utheka that would somehow solve my problems. I can't help but feel like I'm missing something, something big. Oh well, it's probably not that much of an issue. I reached the structure and used the special key to open it, but it was the wrong key. Oh no, this must be a key to Cacti's car or something pointless like that. How am I ever going to get in there now? That's when I realized my wall climbing ability. I could use it to break into the building from above. I climbed up to the top of the building and used my axe to shatter the ceiling from above, then dropped down into the chamber. There, I found it, the cockroach Utheka in all of its gross, weird glory. This is it. It's finally time for me to get what I'm owed. But it wasn't time just yet. I felt the world rumbling around me until a giant, monstrous bobbit worm crawled out of the ground, ready to attack. Oh no, worm time. I slashed with my diamond sword and turned the terrifying worm into sausage rolls. The battle raged on, but in the end, I was victorious. Guess it was garbage day. From day 90 to day 94, as I was exiting the house, I realized that these days were about to get a whole lot garbage -er. Big Mike the Evoker appeared behind me, hitting me with some kind of explosion blast that froze me in place. You're trapped, Z Zozo, this is the price of your disloyalty. I would have paid you back eventually. I couldn't trust you as far as I'd throw you. You've tricked and conned everyone. There's one born every minute, Zozo. You're so ungrateful. And I'll show you how ungrateful you are by taking everything you have. No, that's so excessive. Too late. He ran away, cackling, leaving me trapped in place. From day 95 to day 97, when my spell wore off, I immediately jumped into action. What Big Mike had said about taking everything I have didn't seem like a good sign. I need to warn people. I think the Mandragora boss and the Armored Mountaineers are closest. And I was right. But by the time I got to the Gravelly Mountains, it looked like everything had been destroyed. All that was left was the Mandragora boss himself, gravely wounded. Mandragora boss, no! I'm so sorry that I didn't get here sooner. Don't worry about me, Zozo. You need to get out of here. And to go into your base, too. Go! Before it's too late! I will. Big Mike the Evoker needs to be stopped. One more thing, Zozo. Do you think I'm cool? Yes. Yes, Mandragora boss. I think you're cool. Thank you, Zozo. I, I can go happily now. The Mandragora passed, and I ran off back to my base, hoping it wouldn't be too late. On day 98, I returned back to my base and found it was too late. The whole place had been almost leveled, destroying everything that myself and Agtha had worked so hard to build. Wait, Agtha! Where is she? My worries went away when Agtha emerged, seemingly unharmed. I'm here, Zozo. It's okay. But how? How did you survive Big Mike's attack? I'll reveal the truth soon, Zozo. But first, we need to go to Big Mike's place. The final battle draws near. If this goes well, we'll defeat him. Once and for all. It made me feel nervous, but it seemed like she was right. It was time to end this once and for all. On day 99, we arrived at the outskirts of Big Mike's filthy, disgusting pigsty of a home. Guess it's now or never. What was the secret you wanted to tell me, Agtha? The truth is, Zozo, I'm not real. What? It's true. I've been your imaginary friend all along. Every time you thought I was doing something, it was actually you doing it. This is so wild. No offense, Agtha, but why would I imagine an imaginary cockroach friend? Because, Zozo, as a garbage man, you knew on some level that you needed the spirit of a cockroach. We can survive a nuclear explosion, and you can survive this. It's why you felt you needed the cockroach Utheka. But in truth, Zozo, you had the strength inside of you all along. I was so touched by this, I took a deep breath and entered the filthy, filthy base. On day 100, it was time to square up against Big Mike the Evoker. I'm here for my back pay and for some payback. You stole that line from the mask. Be that as it may, my point stands. Let's finish this, Big Mike. I may never see your emeralds, but I'll see your defeat. The battle was on, with my burning trash going up against Big Mike's energy blast. But in the end, channeling the power of cockroaches and garbage was enough to give me what I needed. No, I'm finally going to have to pay. With a decisive strike from my diamond sword, Big Mike the Evoker was no more. He'd never caught anyone ever again.